So, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest was told by God why it's foolish to worry or be in fear, no matter what. Next. I've thought for myself in every area of life, but one, I knew nothing until I discovered a realm where the truth isn't what it seems. A realm where the truth becomes reality. I've spent over 50 years investigating the world of the supernatural. Every moment has led up to the main event. Millions of Jewish people will be saved all over the world. God's heart is for all to believe, for none to perish. It's called the greater glory. Do you believe? It's supernatural. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Go and flow. My guest, Jody Keck, was raised in a home with an extremely abusive, atheistic, alcoholic father. Her mom took her to church occasionally. Her parents divorced when she was a child. When did you give your life to Jesus, Jody? When I was about 20, I had an experience with the Lord, and I felt like I had become born again. But my mother passed away when I was 21, and I found myself in an extremely dark place, and I fell back into the world. There were times when um, I was suicidal. Twice I held a gun to my head, but God, I was raised in this home where my father didn't believe in God, but my mother would take us to a church that was extremely religious, a lot of rules, a lot of religion, and I was very confused. Finally, though, when I was 30, I had been through a lot. I had been through a divorce. I had been through a second marriage, but at 30 years old, I truly surrendered to the Holy Spirit for the first time and was totally all into what He wanted for my life. And it began a journey of a process of healing and uh, just an immersion in Him. And uh, you went to a church where they talked about being, speaking of immersion, immersed in the Ruach HaKodesh, in the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, tell me about your experience in that. So my husband Steve and I went to this new church and they believed in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They believed in the with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And in the beginning, I really wasn't sure what to think. Again, being steeped in that religion and all the rules, I was quite um, confused, but I saw something in them that started a spark inside of me that, and I told the Lord, if that's real, God, if this is you, then I'm all in. I want all of you. I need all of you if this is real. So shortly after that, the Holy Spirit, I didn't understand at the time who he was and exactly how he was working, but as I grew in him, I look back and, and understand it was the Holy Spirit inside of me. But he began to just birth something in me, even a, more of a hunger. Every night I would uh, go to bed and pray, God, if this is you, show me. So one night in church, we're having a worship service and I'm standing there before the Lord, just learning how to lift my hands and truly surrender and praise. And um, all at once I felt this incredible presence of God come upon me to the point that it was so tangible that I could not stand under that type of weight of His glory. So I immediately sat down. When I sat down, I had a vision, and Jesus Himself came to me. 
He came and he totally sat and enveloped my entire being. Immediately from my left, the Holy Spirit came. I saw a vision of him and he came and did the same thing. Instantly, I was baptized in his spirit and out of my mouth, out a river of this beautiful prayer language just erupted and I began speaking in tongues. Once he immersed me and baptized me in his spirit and I was filled, the healing process of, of all the traumatic things in my life began, but instantly I was just immersed in the supernatural. God just immediately began giving me dreams, giving me visions. So I went from this person who didn't believe any of this to now I'm having dreams, I'm having visions, I'm seeing things. How, how did you process that? It was Well, it was glorious and it was wonderful, but I was also naive. I just assumed, because that is the normal Christian life, that everybody, once they receive Jesus, lives like that. So I had to find out the hard way a bit that not everybody thinks like that, even as Christians, or live like that, but it, um, it was so easy in some ways. In, in some ways, of course, there were those times when the enemy would come against me and he would try to say, that's all a lie, that's not real. But I just kept moving forward in him and I, I just had a knowing. It, I just had a knowing. Right. What happened with that abusive, atheistic, alcoholic father? A miracle a true miracle, because I tell people that um, if my father can accept Jesus, don't ever give up on your prodigals. If my <laughs> father... <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I had the privilege of leading my father to the Lord. So at the age of 67, the atheist father now became the believer. And was, and was radically saved, born again, and spent the rest of his life serving God. But something, there's one more thing you said when I was prepping myself for this interview. And you had a pure love for the, the atheistic, abusive, Father, what was that love like? And there were many years that I spent very angry, very angry, uh, but God. And as soon as my dad came to the Lord, God started walking me through an even deeper emotional healing to the point where even though he still rejected me, I, my father, even though he became a Christian, there were times he still rejected me. And so God began walking me through this journey of saying, you trust me, I am your father. Mm. I am your father, you trust me, and let me do the work in you and leave him to me. And as I grew in the Lord, he began walking me through these years of healing and forgiveness towards my father. And I can say that in the last year of my father's life, he was very sick. And for the last three days that my father was on this earth, I sat with him. I sat at his bedside and I sang worship over him and I prayed over him. And God gave me this supernatural love for my father, this shell of a man that lay there dying that I really didn't know that well but I had such pure love. There was no bitterness, there was no anger, there was no unforgiveness. The Holy Spirit just burned it all out of me and let it all go. And I was with him when he took his last breath and was ushered into heaven to be with the Lord. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible for those who believe. Jody just wrote a new book called The River of Glory. 52 Keys to Living in God's Presence. That, that is so wonderful. Every week someone can concentrate on a different aspect to 
open themselves up to live in a greater presence of God. Tell us a few of the keys. This book was years in the making. It is a testimony of what God has done in my life. And He began revealing these keys to me and showing me how to walk them out. I knew I had to share them with people because they're so impactful. And if you truly want to live in His presence, if you truly want to experience His glory, these are simple things that we need to do, but we have to do them. How many times is that word glory used in the Bible? Do you know? Glory is used over 600 times in the Word of God. Hmm. And so it's very relevant. A lot of people, when we start talking about the glory realm, some people don't understand that. But it is His presence, is that tangible presence of the Lord that He wants us to walk in with Him. These keys, we go over things. I've written about honor, boldness, repentance, joy, compassion. 52 keys. One, and, one of my favorites you write about, humility. Humility, yes, yes. Tell you what, God taught Jody how to go from hope in her prayer life to faith. She's taught thousands this subtle, simple difference, and they're getting the same amazing results. Be right back. about the time the glory filled your house. One day I was home alone and I just began to worship the Lord. You know, that is a key, a very strong key in how to enter into His presence and walk in that glory. But I just began to sing worship before the Lord. Before you knew it, I was singing in my prayer language and I began to worship Him. And as the glory began to ascend into my home, the thicker it got, all of a sudden I began to sing in a way that I had never done before. And He was there with me that day. It was so strong in my home. It's that kabod glory. It's that weighty presence of the Lord. And you can just feel Him and He's there with you. So I began singing. And the more that I sang and the more that I worshiped Him and put my eyes on Him, the more the glory filled my home. I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me and He said, this is a call to worship. So I just continued in that worship, but I thought I have to call some people. My husband needs to come home. I, I, I still have to ask you this question. When you were worshiping God, did you have worship music on? Were you at a piano or was it just a cappella yourself? No, it was just me. It was just me singing to the Lord and giving Him my praise. But what was so magnificent was as I did that, all of a sudden my voice changed. And it sounded as if someone else was singing through me. I could hear the angels begin to sing with me. My voice didn't sound the same. And so that's when he said, this is a call to worship. So I called my husband, I called my daughter and her children. I called a pastor that's a friend of ours. I called our son. I said, the glory of God is in our home so strong. You have to come home. Well, praise the Lord that they all believe in me and that here they came. Every person came. When my grandchildren opened the door to come into the home, they literally asked my daughter, Whitney, Mom, who is that here singing? Who is with Nana singing with her? They heard the angel singing. They heard my voice was different. They said, who's here? So they came into the great room. By this time, the presence of God was so strong, I had literally laid myself prostrate before the Lord, just worshiping Him. And even when they came in, they felt the glory. And we sat there just immersed in His presence. Everybody just entered into that worship because remember the Holy Spirit had said, this is a call to worship. So they all began worshiping with me. Well, our grandson Aiden, who was about 10 at the time, 
picked up the shofar and he began to blow the shofar. And again, the presence of God for two hours, we sat there immersed in his glory, immersed in his presence. That's what worship can do. When we fully surrender ourselves and we just worship with abandonment and just be with the Lord, he will do that for us. He will bring his glory to us. And it was so refreshing. And our even our grandchildren were changed. They talk about it to this day. We heard the angel singing with my Nonna. Hmm. Now, Jesus actually changed the way you pray. Briefly explain that. He did. One night I was walking through my house and I heard the Holy Spirit ask me this question that's changed my life. He said, Jody, what are you believing me for? And so I stopped and I thought about some of the things that I had been praying about. And he stopped me and he said, no, that's what you're asking me for. I want to know what you're believing me for. You see, there's a difference. Explain briefly the difference. When we ask for something, we request it. But when we believe for something, we accept it and we receive it. And the word's very specific to say ask, but it's also very specific to say believe. That changed my prayer life instantly. So I want to encourage people right now, for those of you that are watching and listening, don't just ask him for things, but believe that what you ask will be done in Jesus' name. Now, very briefly, tell me about the vision you had of the girl in heaven. One day I was at a pastors and leaders meeting, and it just so happened that there were only two women there, myself and another lady. So of course we gravitated to each other and we sat with each other. And I noticed the sadness behind her eyes. And as she was talking to me, she revealed that it was the anniversary of her daughter's death that she had lost several years earlier. So her daughter had gone to be with the Lord at 12 years old. She had battled with cancer. The Holy Spirit opened my eyes with the most glorious vision, and I could see this little girl in heaven, long chestnut hair just flowing, and she was carrying this bowl in her hand of this glistening liquid. She walked over, and I saw Jesus sitting in a chair, and I could see his feet. And she walked over, and she sat at his feet, and she began washing Jesus' feet out of this bowl. Instantly, the Holy Spirit showed me what that glistening liquid was. And he showed me that it was her mama's tears, that that child was in heaven washing the feet of the master with her tears. And I just, I began to weep. Here we are sitting here. I began to weep and I said, oh, Angela, I have to tell you that Courtney is in heaven washing the feet of the master with every tear you have cried. It has not been in vain. Every tear that you've shed over your daughter have washed the feet of Jesus. And later he revealed to me that it wasn't just for her, but it was for everybody. The tears that we have wept and mourned over the lost ones, I can't imagine what the people that I have wept over that maybe my tears have washed the feet of Jesus. It was glorious and she was changed. I saw her a few minutes, a few months later and she came to me and just said, I can't tell you how that has changed my life. And my grief is not the same. I don't cry like I used to cry, but when I do, I rejoice that I'm washing the feet of the master. Now, our time is slipping away, but I've got to have you share the story of releasing the angel armies. Yes, okay. Again, I'm home alone one day And this was just right after the pandemic broke and I had turned off the news and you could just feel the the fear in the air from people everywhere you went. I mean, even Christians sometimes they'd look at each other like, oh, should I stay away from you? Are you okay to talk to? So I could just feel that. And I would I began praying for people and just praying about the to release that fear off of people and um, all of a sudden I heard this noise and it I thought is that a helicopter flying really low to my home? What is happening? And so I got up and I went and I looked out the windows. The top of the trees were just swaying violently, but nowhere else was 
the wind blowing. I didn't see, I looked around and it just kept getting louder and louder. Pretty soon that noise became very rhythmic and it was um, the sound of marching. And it was in such unison, I thought, that sounds like marching. And then um, I heard these drums beating. God immediately opened my eyes to this vision. And there was thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of angels, row after row after row, all standing and marching in unison. Those drums beating, it was so loud, I could physically feel it inside of me. My body was trembling. The drums were so loud. And I saw it was platoon after platoon, and one veered to the east, one veered to the west, north and south. And I said, God, what is happening? And he said, I have released my angel armies. To do what? To watch over us, to break the fear, to protect us, to be with us for these end times. Because as the dark gets darker, the light gets lighter. And he wants us to know those angel armies have been released upon this earth, that we do not need to walk in fear of what's to come and what's before us, because he has released them and he is there with us. I want you to experience reality relationship, the presence of God, the love of God. I want you to say this prayer and mean it to the best of your ability. Say it out loud after me. Repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God I've made many mistakes. Made many mistakes. I'm, so I'm so sorry. I believe your blood, believe your blood. washed me clean. And now that I'm clean, Jesus, come and live inside of me. You've saved me from my sins. I now make you Lord of my life. Amen. Jody, I want you to pray that same glory that came on you will come on the viewers right now. Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, we pray, O oh God, for every person that's watching, every person that's listening, that your glory may fall upon them, that your glory would come into their homes, into their lives. Father, I pray that you touch every person, bring your Holy Spirit in a tangible way, bring your fire in a tangible way to your people. God, you have released your angels and you have released your glory. So now in the name of Jesus, release your glory upon your children as never before. May it manifest as never before. May we surrender to everything that you have for us, everything that you want us to do. Oh God, I pray your glory come. I pray your children know you in a powerful way. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus. We agree together. We believe together in Jesus' name. Amen. So be it.